In perhaps his most famous speech, Frederick Douglass once said, Standing with God and the crushed and bleeding slave on this occasion, I will, in the name of humanity which is outraged, in the name of liberty which is fettered, dare to call in question and to denounce, with all the emphasis I can command, everything that serves to perpetuate slavery. The History Place, page 2. His message against slavery could not have been any clearer. But this project asks us to focus on a prominent issue of our generation. Slavery doesn't count, right? It's 1840. Frederick Douglass is forced to work on plantations and in shipyards while being beaten and threatened regularly. It is 2001. Flor Molina is forced to work 18 hours a day with only 10 minutes each day to eat the one meal she is given. She is threatened and told that her family will pay the consequences if she tries to escape. It is 2006. Vanak Proom is forced to work on a fishing boat 20 hours each day. He is beaten and tortured. He escapes only to be sold to a plantation by the police. Beatrice Fernando is sold as a domestic slave. She is beaten and locked in the house of her owner and works 20 hours each day. At the age of six, James Anon is already working 17 hours a day catching fish. He is beaten and deprived of sleep and proper medical care. It is 2017, and about 46 million people are enslaved worldwide. Today, there are more slaves than at any other time in human history. McNally, too. Here is a map of the world with the countries that have a higher percentage of slaves colored closer to red. So why, in a world where every country has abolished slavery, are there 46 million slaves? The answer has everything to do with money. Just like in the time of Frederick Douglass, running a business or plantation is easier and cheaper when you do not have to pay your workers. It is easier when you do not have to treat them like human beings. The International Labor Organization estimated that the annual profits of slavery amount to $150 billion, according to Grono, page 2. But this demand for cheap labor does not cause slavery unless there are people available to exploit. Vulnerability to slavery comes in many forms. This chart, made by the Global Slavery Index, breaks slavery vulnerability into four factors and their subsets. Simplified, the categories are the level of conflict in a person's area, that person's safety or danger in their life, their socioeconomic status, and the rights of the citizens in their country. The categories that I use go along the same lines as these. Most traffickers take advantage of poverty and unemployment, mental health issues and addiction, or insecurity of their victims. They promise jobs, food, substances, or better living conditions. Traffickers use violence or threats of violence, coercion, fraud, or deception to keep control of their victims. Traffickers sometimes also keep their victims dependent on them for money, food, language skills, or other necessities to prevent them from leaving. Some people are forced to work to pay off the debt of their ancestors. However, this debt is rarely paid off because the traffickers use high interest rates and other dishonest tactics to keep control. In cases where a person is smuggled into another country for a job, traffickers often claim that their victims owe money for transport and must work to pay it off. This is known as debt bondage. In places where the governments are weak and unresponsive or, un or unstable, traffickers can enslave people with little fear of facing legal consequences. In some cases, governments play a role in promoting slavery, using their power to coerce people into slavery or sharing in the profits of private trafficking groups in exchange for turning a blind eye. Another legal problem is the lack of protection for victims of slavery. In some countries, victims can be jailed for acts that they were forced to commit by their traffickers, thus keeping victims in fear of going to the police for help. So what can you do to end slavery? 
The first step is awareness. Knowing that slavery exists as a problem that needs to be solved is a step forward from thinking that it disappeared years ago. Awareness of the signs of slavery will also make you better equipped to recognize it in the future, or prevent you from becoming enslaved yourself. After awareness, there are different paths to ending slavery. Some groups rescue slaves from their traffickers and heal then empower these former slaves. Prosecuting traffickers is an important step in this process to prevent others from being taken advantage of by the same person or group of people. As an 8th grader, you might not be able to be very active in the steps of rescue, prosecution, or healing, but you can donate to groups who do these things or find a group that you can help that works to empower former slaves. The other path focuses on destroying the institutions of slavery through policy and reducing demand for slave labor. Policy work can include asking elected officials to create more protections for victims of slavery or to create more programs working on slavery prevention. It can also include writing letters to companies asking them to stop using slave labor in their products or asking them to be open about the way they treat their workers. Another way to dismantle the institution of slavery is refusing to buy products made by companies that enslave their workers. There are websites like slaveryfootprint.org that use information about your living habits to estimate how many slaves work to make things for you. There are also websites that list common products made by slaves so that you can avoid them. If this topic is of interest to any of you, I would be happy to put together a list of the websites that I looked at and learned from in the creation of this project. Frederick Douglass was vehemently opposed to slavery. He did not stop fighting slavery once he himself had escaped. Instead, he worked to end slavery for all. I think, were he alive today, that he would continue fighting against the slavery that still exists today. Frederick's contribution was fundamental in the fight against slavery, but it would be a mistake to forget that we still have a long way to go. Slavery, Not Just Frederick's Problem by Elena Deacon Krauss